This is the U.S. intelligence agency, Mind Control. Speaking about people who pee their pants in public. <laughs> nah, man, they they shat their pants in public. That's that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> These two? Yeah, they shat their pants. Not literally, but sh- <laughs> they're just they're kind of shitting the bed right now. <laughs> you must have known you were wrong when your fingers were dipped inside me, searching for honey that would not come for you. This on like Vimeo or something? This doesn't look like YouTube. Uh, this is Twitter. Okay. This is Twitter. Yeah. I also check this out. Um, head of the Sudanese Armed Forces. He's the head of Transitional Council, and his deputy is Dakalo on the right. <laughs> so now he's at war with his deputy. You understand? The idea was that uh, the RSF, this paramilitary group that belongs to Dakalo on the right would be integrated into the Sudanese armed forces, okay? So they would become part of the regular army. Dagalu got the feeling that... (laughs) That cut, bro! I was just about to say, is he like, is he like cutting in the middle of a sentence? Dude, the close-up, and then he's like, Dagalu... (laughs) Dagalu got the feeling (laughs) that once the uh, the RSF are integrated into the Sudanese armed forces that he's basically going to be eliminated. There's a power struggle going on here. These guys are fighting. So who benefits from this? Just ask yourself this question. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying. You have to remember, this is the Red Sea we're talking about. The Red Sea. This place right here. This is not just a nice place to sail your boat. This is the most vital shipping lane on the planet. On the planet. And everyone wants to have a foothold here. From an economic side, there's gold, there's uranium. You know, um, uh, China and Russia, yeah, they're... they're Why do you think everyone likes Djibouti? Here we go. He's like, China and Russia, yeah, they're there. But here we go. This is where it's going to come. I was like, how... I'm like, he's doing good. He's doing good. He's acknowledging that, that the gold is part of it and the Red Sea. Like, he's leading... There's a lot of correct information in there to lead you to the point. They're interested in mining in Sudan. Africa has 54 countries, and in, and in 50 of those countries, the Americans have military attaches. The thing is that because the Americans do it, the Chinese and the Russians are looking at it, if we don't do anything, we're going to get screwed. And- America, we're the, we're the Mujahideen. We're the Mujahideen. So now the Russians have to go and put a base on the Red Sea. Now, in the case of Sudan, the Russians are exchanging weapons for a naval base, right? But they, they have said, we, we, we will not go ahead until the people of Sudan have formed a government. You should always ask yourself who stands to gain from the situation. And then you'll, try, it, it, you'll see things more clearly with more clarity. Burhan on the left. I mean... Technically, he wasn't wrong about anything there. Uh, he, no, he, he, not if really. If you do look at the situation, you will form more clearly. Um, yeah, that, being the, vague uh, tends itself to. Yeah, uh, and I think that it's like just because sometimes. he's being careful, just because he knows that he's got nothing. Like, how can you really twist it in to be like anti-America, really? Like that's that's his whole shtick. Is like how do you, it's like how do you make it a pro Syria take? You don't. You're just like, hey, it's the Red Sea. Like America, access to the Red Sea. Uh, we got like a base in in Djibouti. We have Saudi Arabia. We have Egypt, and we also almost always have people in Somalia. So if Russia wants to have Sudan to have access, then why shouldn't they? I mean, Sudan's been doing yeah. business with them for a while. Why should, like, why shouldn't they? I mean, it's, that's a fair point. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that like, obviously there's going to be like nefarious things always going on at like statecraft levels, mm. you know, like America will probably try, try to get an edge here over Russia and that stuff. But like, come on. Sudan is not off on the top of the priority list. Um, 
especially like like um gold right so like gold is like um the uranium yes but gold it's it's very interesting because it depends on like uh it's better it's better for like a criminal shit you know like we still have like enough oil and shit like we really gonna fight russia over that gold and like russia also oh, in, so wagner's also in mali and they're there for gold too do you see al Qaeda fucking bombed him? Wagner and Molly? Check it out. Hang on two seconds. He didn't say that. Uh, yeah, I'll show you. Uh, by the way, Richie Medhurst fucks kids. What? what? Hold up. Oh, you didn't know this? About like, no. bro, he like uses his like bandmates like page to like talk to underage girls and shit. Oh, God. Yeah, he's a total EDP. Let's see. So, uh, Al Qaeda uh, hit Mali's main or hit Wagner's main base in Mali with three car bombs. Mali armed forces quickly regained control, potentially using an attack helicopter. Twenty nine dead. There's bullet sounds in this one. So, Twenty nine dead, sixty injured. No proper facilities to treat them. Unclear what the call, what the ratio is, or if Wagner was even involved. Shit's but, popping off. But the but Al Qaeda hit him here. And like uh Wagner is here because of gold, you know. So Wagner's there because of gold, they're in Sudan because of gold. We have to remember that well, like this whole like nefarious, like ultimate control Russia has over Wagner, we know it's not there. Like they obviously work in Russia's interest and work with Russia's partners, but if you look at the commonality of gold, you're gonna find Wagner there. So Wagner is more interested in their own gold interests. And like Russia, obviously, is going to get a cut of that. But Russia knows that it's going to benefit them. They don't need to really invest in it. Wagner can just do their own thing. That's why they wanted to leave Ukraine. Because like when they were back and when they were back and focused in Africa as their main front, like no, they, had, they didn't have to answer to anybody. They could do whatever the fuck they wanted. They could loot and rape whoever they wanted. And nobody gave a shit. But in Ukraine, they're like micromanaged, like Hitler managing his little armies up there. Uh, real quick, with what you just mentioned with Mali, I think it was back in May. They there was like these a massacre, kind of like really ominous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not not a whole lot of details, but there were these massacres that they went into some villages and killed like some two hundred people. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was, and then I think uh, that also was directly involved with gold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was there was talk about that as well. Yeah, so I don't know since May if Al Qaeda has kind of like stepped up its whole operation there because of the massacre. And as we know, Al Qaeda tactics tend to lend themselves to capitalizing on tragedies like that. But um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, also uh, the triple car bomb is just like a classic Al Qaeda thing. Um, so because of that so the last time we saw one of those was the clashes in somalia so depending on um how their network actually works like they could be using like the same commander to align these triple attacks that they were using in mogadishu potentially because they do ship them back and forth i remember scott was saying that like uh there was somebody some Al Qaeda branch that overnight they upgraded to vehicle borne IEDs. You remember that? Him talking about mm -hmm. that? So I don't know if that was Somalia or Nigeria or something like that, but it was that it was something about how the bomb makers and the strategists of Al Qaeda get around. So um, who knows? They might, Al Qaeda might be refocusing because um, we also have the new Amir, right? So they might be refocusing their mission in West Africa um, because ISIS is like kicking the shit out of them over there there and they might be like less worried about like their somali and boko haram branches as as their african outreach and they might try to focus way way more in like the west african region because they can also uh they could probably also shift their front to be anti-french because uh isis already does that and that's why like isis will attack france and they did attacks in france so if they capitalize off that anti-French sentiment as well, everyone hates France right there right now because France is like telling people they're like deporting Africans in Africa right now. Like France is like doing all this like weird shit. I don't know. I, half of it, because like half of it, I hear it from like African press. 
And like, I, I don't know them well enough to understand the biases and things like that. But like France is always doing weird shit, like micromanaging their currencies and all that shit. Like, so, you know, who knows? And also that because we're uh, too, too bad Richie hasn't uh, woken up or anything because he was talking about how um, France and Greece have like a basically an AUKUS thing. And they were talking about how Greek soldiers were to be mobilized in West Africa with France. And how it was very unpopular among the people of Greece to get involved. In but they're going to do it anyway because democracies don't give a fuck about what their people say. Yeah. And like, so there hasn't been a single um, Islamic terror attack in Greece. They haven't even been threatened by any Islamic organization. There's tons of terrorism in Greece. It's all domestic terrorism. None of it is like Islamic stuff. They don't care about Greece because Greece is cool with everyone because uh, Greece like even Greece even backs Haftar, you know, like Greece is like kind of the wild card in NATO. Like Turkey is the dick, but like Greece is the wild card just because they like hate Turkey most of the time, but it's very interesting. All right. Where is, here we go. Okay. Let's, 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 let's get try to hit. Cemented the themselves now as a, as a regional uh, power. Really, and and I know people are going to say, well, they they've been doing that for a while, and it's true. No, no, no. Th this is this is this is uh, their uh, uh, you know their best their best uh, play yet. And let me show you just the signing ceremony, uh, and then we'll get more into details. They they were basically reading these out in each language, in English, and Arabic, and then Farsi and Chinese. And, oh, is this the whole um, China broken um, peace thing? Uh, this is Wang Yi, who's the, uh, the head of uh, China's well, uh, foreign ministry. So they're basically the top diplomat here. Here, uh, he uh, gave a little interview. He looks like a um. He looks like a Team America puppet. I mean, just look at the difference in the language. Just look at the difference of behavior. Look, look at the difference between difference in the language. They're literally speaking different languages. Can you believe it? In China and the United States, when the United States, when 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 Britain, when we go to the Middle East, we steal oil, we we take uh, the resources, we plunder the land, we colonize them. You know. Uh. China famously not known for C colonizing. And CIA, CIA reacts part 200. <laughs> They're like, come on. Like the, this, what do you mean? The language China's China is talking all nice and diplomatically, bro. Have you seen how America talks about the middle East in like the recent five years or something? You no, know, the, the French, the same thing, you know, look at the Chinese, look at the difference. Look what they have done. You know, the United States has, has, has been in the Middle East uh, for 20 years. Where should, we, where should region, we begin? You know, white... Okay, so, if, Brad, this, he's on this point where he's, like, trying to fix the region for 20 years. Look what China has done, bro. They signed a piece of paper. They, they fucking, bro, like, manna ra raining from the sky, from gift from God. Like, yeah, man they've complex. done nothing. Um, and and what, do you, what do you have to show for it? Nothing. Zero. Now the Chinese, they come in, and and I mean, wow, <laughs> you know, this is a a a, 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 a supposed um, a strictly, you know, oh the the uh, Chinese Communist Party, and yet suddenly the the Chinese Communist Party, um, who according to Pompeo is su is such a threat, they're able to mediate between uh, Pompeo. Pompeo isn't in government anymore. He's like, according to Pompeo, ex CIA guy that the, used to um, be in government. The Wumers love Pompeo. They're his oh, favorite. I know. They're their I know. favorite. You know who else? You know who else is the Iranians because they blame him for mm -hmm. the death of Qasem Soleimani. Bro, <laughs> he got like I I like like hadn't seen him in a while, and then he got skinny, and I like had no idea who he was. Uh, a Sunni um, kingdom, right? And and a, a Shia uh, a republic. I mean. <laughs> They, they got to be doing something right. Okay, they got to be doing something right. And this shouldn't surprise you if you know your history. You know, the Chinese mediation 
diplomacy, this is this is a Chinese trait. Uh, this is a Chinese policy, and it goes back millennia, millennia. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, bro. That is the goddamn. It's a, a Chinese trait to go and make. Bro, bro's bro's qu quoting on some Eastern knowledge shit right now. He's like, yeah, the Chinese they're very good mediators, you know. <laughs> Says the CCP. Well, also like, um. <laughs> This whole if you thing, go back a thousand years, they used to leave out green tea for their guests, so therefore they're good mediators. What was the thing? I don't remember exactly because this is from like a month ago, but um, it was something like somebody was talking about how Saudi Arabia wants to move and move diplomatic things with Iran now because in a few months something will happen with either like Israel or something. Some deal will take place. The Yemen withdrawal will go down or something, and they want to make progress with Iran now. Oh, they're because it's like they're talking about like nuclear deals. Maybe they were trying to say that um, or Saudi Arabia is gonna needs to make progress now with Iran because there's something because, that's coming in place that will block them later. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, is it because the uh, the money that's been frozen by the by the um uh, what is it the termination of the Iran nuclear deal is going to be unfrozen again? Is that it? you're muted i meant to unmute yeah so it was something like that just talking about how saudi arabia needs to move and and make uh, make diplomacy with iran now because they want to move forward with diplomacy in iran because they need to do it because they're trying to end the war in yemen and uh this right this uh he'll i'm sure he'll start getting into it more and i'll we can start criticizing that directly but we know i've seen like tons of people running away with this about how like the u.s empire has fallen because now saudi arabia is dealing with china yeah, the whole US that is what China shit. is able to get over a hundred countries to join the Belt and Road Initiative. That that's why China is able to uh, undertake agreements and and work out deals with other countries in peace without sending its soldiers there or building a base there. Right? There's mutual respect. You know, you give me this, I give you that. I help you now, you help me down the line. Not oh, I'm going to send in my warships, I'm going to send in my drones and intimidate you into giving me what what I want while I'm pretending to help you at the same time. Big, big, big difference. Huge difference. Is he talking about China? I'm telling you that the Chinese... <laughs> yeah, he's saying Chinese, uh, they're morally support, superior because they can't station troops places. I think that's what he's saying. Curious tactic. Yo, you know, so China, China's better because they have Belt and Road and all these nations have signed on to the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, brokering this deal is the icing and uh, it's... <laughs> Bro, you, you want crazy that people are working with China. Nobody does that in the world. Certainly not America. America would never do business with China. America would never invest in China's infrastructure directly. America would never invest in China's capital directly. We we would never sell them agricultural products either. Yeah, would... we would never do this mutual respect thing, even though we're enemies. Because this whole thing is just like, you talk, what do you think that the Saudi Iran thing isn't a, coming out of like a mutual respect? You know. Like they know, they know like who's they can't just like boss the other person around and get what they want. They know exactly the powers that are at play on that table, and why not? Why not turn to China? They, well, once again, this who is, else this can is, negotiate? This is another. This is another side of the um uh, the coin when we're talking about like people being so caught up in their ideology and being naive. He's like so caught up in like this anti-Americanism. He he doesn't even realize how diplomacy works. Oh, well, this dude! I this dude wants. He's this is only like he wants so bad to like really really be a lot bigger in the disinformation network, like Aaron Mate level. Like Aaron Mate makes so much money. I'm sure this guy makes decent money. I mean. It's not just the, the cake, the icing. It's also the cherry on top all in one. Okay? It, this is so embarrassing for the West. It's so, so, so embarrassing. All you hear, you know, you is go to these, these, these supposedly fancy um, uh, uh, foreign policy schools where they teach you nothing but, you know, Western superiority complex. And, and, and uh, they'll drum into your head, like, why, why is the Middle East 
um, in, in such duress, right? It can't be because of us. You know, we are only doing peaceful things over there. No, no, it's not because of us. Oh, I know why. It's because you have these Sunnis who are fighting these Shia and they just hate each other. And, it, you know, that's that's the logic, right? And they can't. There's no peace because of this. Because the, Iran is supporting Shia groups and, and Saudi Arabia is supporting uh, uh, Sunni groups, and that's the root of all the problem. It's just a bunch of you know um, uh, uh, people in caves running around killing each other because of their religion. Okay, yeah, sure. So how do you explain this then? Huh. How do you explain this, man? It's like you know in in Iraq after the invasion of Iraq. The invasion itself was was a, a huge crime, but then you had this uh, quote unquote the all invasions are crime. There's no such thing as a legal or illegal invasion, first of all. Let's just get that out of the way. All invasions are wrong. I'm sure, like, can we present uh, one where it was good? Technically, you know, D-Day, we were invading German territory. I mean, um, let's see, justified invasion. We were invading territory that had been invaded yeah well that's the whole thing is is the liberation excuse is also twisted but obviously not there that's not what i'm saying obviously not there <laughs> but you know if they're like russia will say they're liberating the donbass is what i was implying but that's the thing this is like justified invasions i'm trying to think of one um i i like the closest i could like get to like where i could start to like make excuses for it being valid is like the first Persian Gulf but that wasn't really like an invasion it was just like a coordinated bombing campaign and like destruction and stuff like that it was more it was actually a limited contingent or whatever Putin was calling his thing in Ukraine that it's not an invasion that's the closest I could get because it was like the invasion of Kuwait and it's not like you guess you know you could say that you didn't topple Saddam so it wasn't like but even that, it's like you, there was a lot of shit that they did there that was like so unnecessary, like just slaughtering people on the highway of death and you know all that shit. I don't know, man. I don't think I don't think I can think of one. I'm trying my hardest to think of an invasion that is justified by any country, and I can't do it. Um, a sectarian violence flaring up, like it just came out of no, nowhere, like a volcano. No, that was the United States. That was the United States creating the environment for something like this to happen and fueling that fire and and uh and allowing this to to transpire in the first place how come you never had that before did we fuel the fire by giving them kirkuk is that what we did did we fuel the fire by you know operating intelligence with the pmf indirectly through the irgc you know you think we weren't giving the irgc intelligence I think the IRGC wasn't giving us intelligence. Iran's an enemy, but, you know, uh, all states are going to work. When something comes to their advantage, they're going to take the opportunity. And there was an opportunity to work with Iran. And that's the whole thing is, is like uh, that deal with Trump, like uh, giving them giving them Kirkuk and then, you know, bombing Qasem Soleimani a little later. I mean, do we honestly believe that Iran was actually trying to retaliate successfully? Are they that bad at actually? Are the are the U.S. that badass that they could only make some people a little concussed because the ground shook a little too hard from all the missiles that they missed to the targets with? Is that is that what we're doing? Four, right? There, you had issues, but not to this degree. So they'll take whatever fissure there is, whatever crack, and then try to expand it a million times. The Chinese, on the other hand, they do the opposite. They're like, look, you guys can work together on this. You can, um, you know, uh, resume these economic um, uh, agreements that you had, which is part of the, 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 the agreement. Um, uh, sorry, the, the deal. And then they try to show them what the benefit is. An and, agreement and, and a deal uh, what they can work the on together. And, and like, uh, you have to think about like uh, Erdogan. Erdogan does this with... Um, like uh, Syria and Syria yeah. and Iran, like Erdogan yeah. does this does this as well, and uh, I'm sure he doesn't have nice things to say about Erdogan, regardless, just because he helps fund the rebels in Syria. Like there's still a like proxy war going on in Yemen. Like it's not like that war ended because they like signed some fucking monetary like treaty that's going to help yeah no sign, their oil signing, infrastructure. Signing, signing an economic agreement is not going to solve the. Uh the 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 humanitarian crisis in Yemen. It's not going to like 
Yeah. You know, and also bring, the, that's bring the thing. It's just that hundreds of thousands of children who have died of malnutrition back to life. Like this isn't it, it, it's it's lining pockets like. Yeah. And like the whole thing with oil, right? They should. They're obviously I've been saying this. You can go anytime I have talked about Saudi Arabia in the past year, you have probably heard me talk about how oil is dead and they're going to start selling their oil to China. Here we go. I've been saying it was going to happen for a year. It happened. They're going to start selling oil to China and expand and, oil to China. Like, you know like who else been... fucking funds China's fucking electrical infrastructure straight? Australia. So, and Like you were saying earlier, they're divesting from Saudi Aramco and they're trying to put all that money into chemicals. Mm-hmm. Right? You but they saying, also don't. They also well. want to. They also want to max it. So the the other 50 side percent of the company, like the U.S. isn't really buying that oil anymore. So oil is going to start losing its value because it's a dying industry. Well, the Chinese are going to buy it for cheap. So and if Iran and Saudi Arabia, because that's the if you remember, like before the Shah of Iran went down, there was this whole thing where he was getting all fussy about oil. And like fucking up the oil economy by like undercutting people and things like that. Like he was always being a dick about it. And that's where that like kind of like rivalry kind of started. Yeah. And uh, that's the thing is, is like them working together and keeping oil regulated is going to help both their countries export oil to China. And who else is going to buy it? Like they have, it's better to do this now. Well, this, this kind of goes back to a whole thing. If, if we look at um, OPEC, Right. What are the countries who are at OPEC? You've got Saudi Arabia, Iran, Qatar, Russia. Um, there's a couple other. Gulf I think Sudan is even missing. part of it or something. Yeah, and it's like these are all countries that have like, you know, reasons to dislike one another. But for whatever reason, they'll they'll make it work. You know, just from a diplomatic perspective, whenever something something like this happens, whenever these economic agreements happen, it, it's not this huge like progress thing that people think it is especially when it comes to money and resources it's it's just a matter of uh keep keeping keeping the uh keeping the line going really although i would like to see like um unlike what erdogan does like kind of reforming assad and like shaking hands with the iranians moving to the point where he's going to fuck over the northern syrians like i've been telling them it's going to happen but they won't listen to me um I would prefer to have China continue doing diplomatic deals that bring Saudi Arabia and Iran together. Um, I would like that to continue to happen. Yeah, no. And again, like um, just kind of, you know, talking to people I know in Saudi and whatnot, they kind of see this as a good thing just because like, you know, we're, we're talking about people who aren't really like just super in tune with, with the, the implications of this deal. The way they see it, it'll, it'll bring like Iran and Saudi closer together diplomatically, and they'll, we, they can finally start like a moving on process. Yeah, that would be the, good. The bullshit of, and that that's objectively a good thing. But yeah, and who knows? Maybe we'll see a lot uh, change in that region when Erdogan loses election. We'll see how the reformer Assad narrative is going to go over with the new opposition. And what happens there? This, but he wants this... to be less. He wants to be less forceful in foreign policy, so the he probably C- will advance with reforming Assad. The CHP isn't isn't going to be. The, 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 we, we need to do an episode on the Turkish elections because it's all shit. Mm-hmm. All the oppositions are so shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. But you know, it's definitely it's definitely a place where we. It's it was like um, I remember just like kind of having a relief when BB left. And like other Palestinians are like, don't, don't celebrate. Nothing's going to change for us. It's going to just get worse for us anyway. And it's like, of yeah. course it is. Yeah. Of course like it is. what's, get... what's the, what's the main opposition leader's name of the CHP? Kachala Doglu? Oh or man. Something? It took he's, me... he's not, he's not great either. That's Erdogan. Regitaib Erdogan. Yeah. Kachala Doglu. He's, he's, he's no good either. He's yeah. a piece of shit too. I think, I think we should elect the dog. That's, that's the difference. Now, you're going to have people say, well, the Chinese are just doing this because they want oil. They're already I mean, buying they oil, man. What, what, what are they going to get? So, a couple of cents off of every bar- every barrel? They're already buying... The, the, yes. that, couple of, that couple of cents <laughs> goes yes. a long way when you're buying a shitload of barrels of oil. Dude, I mean, this is the guy who's going to say everything is about oil when it comes to America, but China, no, it doesn't matter. 
No, the, like if if they could, let's say let's say they get like like I don't know how many barrels. I'm assuming they're buying barrels of oils in the hundreds of thousands, possibly even the millions from Saudi, right? If if they get even like let's say ten cents off the barrel of oil, that adds up in the savings for them. That's that's getting oil for pretty fucking cheap. But yeah, that's just buying that's the just oil. Mathematically you know, with Iran, from they're not even really. Um... Paying for it, I mean, they they were already paying for it in, in in infrastructure, right? But now my point is that you're going to see them maybe undertake deals in other currencies. Do you understand? So so that's something to watch out for because uh, you have a lot of oil deals being done now in in different currencies, even uh, you know rupees or or dirhams or whatever. Whoa! So you mean to tell me that the petrodollar narrative is bullshit and has been all along, and nobody actually really cares that nations move off the petrodollar? And we don't overthrow uh, entire countries like Libya because they decide to like deal in gold or whatever the fucking narrative is. Crazy. So I'm I'm interested to see if there's going to be any progress uh, in that regard. But um, you know, it, it it is it's undeniable that you have Saudi Arabia, um, you know, with its own sphere in the Middle East sphere of influence, and the same for Iran. There, there's there's no question about it. I mean, just again, just to remind you, look at the map, okay. These are regional, and and you can argue in many instances global powers, right? Uh, Saudi Arabia backs the petrodollar. It's the it's, it's the backing of the petrodollar. You know, Iran is is uh, um, not the leader, but uh, a, a crucial crucial member of the axis of resistance. So, Jesus, cringe. I'm gonna I'm gonna go jump out of a window. Holy fuck. I hate that shit, dude. The the access of resistance. So pathway to Jerusalem is true gammon. It it is so interesting for <laughs> once to see Saudi Arabia uh you know leaning towards the east instead of all the way uh you know towards Washington. And uh we only sell them guns. That's our relationship is about guns mostly, buddy. Just so you know, that's all, like the war in Yemen that was all about guns, literally. That Dro- was, drones, literally. drones more specifically, but like uh, also like you know the drones have guns attached to them. Do they really have big an, ones? They, do we sell them Abrams tanks? Uh we might. I, don't I know wouldn't be sure. surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. And still, like they were debating we on sell, whether we sell them a lot of air, we sell them a lot of Air Force equipment. Yeah, and, and we planes, also like drones. refuel their planes so they can bomb yeah. children. Yeah. Let's talk about what Iran does sometimes. You saw that with the Saudis saying they want to join BRICS, right? Uh, Iran saying the same thing, but but that was a a bit more expected. And you saw the Saudis uh, cutting oil production and then uh, kind of embarrassing Biden with no no deal. And and now this is really really cementing this line of of uh, progression in terms of of where Saudi Arabia is going to go because. Seeing seeing China as the mediator is is really just as important as as having the deal itself, um, and I think this is a huge win for them on the world stage. Let me t- tell you just over here the re- you know the fr- it's like friendly Jordies was talking about this about like how like the economic independence you shouldn't he doesn't want to buy nuclear subs because Australia wants to be like economically independent or something like that you know so that's a big move for Saudi Arabia as well because like those, there's this whole notion that they're America's bitch. So they also like this looks really good for them, and like also like because there's also a lot of politics that go on at, at an under level. There's a lot of people who live locally who don't give a fuck what America thinks, you know, and they want to see Saudi Arabia like stand up and be like, "Oh no, we're leaders here. We're not America's bitch." And so it's it's benefiting Saudi Arabia all around. So like, why not? Why like why would why would we care that happened? Yeah, for sure. And this is the thing about America. America is so obsessed with being number one that they're going to try and hold on to it, but they just need to let it go and readjust. Yeah, they're always going to try. Um, they're tr- always going to try it in position where they're going to like min max the dollar and shit like mm. that. But the policy in America, I guarantee you that their foreign policy is not to topple the regime in Iran, and that's why you saw such hesitancy in all our governments. For like, there was only a few Canadian politicians who like virtue signaled that shit. Like, nobody cared about the Iran protests. Nobody's working to, nobody's moving to downfall the Iranian regime. That's why they put the Taliban back in because they don't actually care. 
they know that they don't have to be involved if they just like if the if as long as Hakani keeps playing ball and lets us you know tells us where Al Qaeda heads are, then the Taliban can be left alone just like Iran has. Like they're going to be sanctioned. Like obviously we're going to sanction the fuck out of them. But like, come on, like we're going to to go topple the guy in Iran and like create an instability by the way speaking 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 of uh how we were saying earlier that like invasions are never like legal or never justified i mean invasions are also never not like a pain in the ass for the person invading <laughs> like going in and toppling a regime is a is is a like a logistical and just like a a resource nightmare and so, I know people are going like, to be like, oh, well, America has invaded and toppled the regime before because everything goes to Iraq. And, you know, it's a guy, yeah. it's a guy, but, it is guy but, but, at, but at the same time, just look, look through how, look through how much of a, a pay to the ass it was just to just to do the invasion of Iraq. Like, I, I don't think of especially given like, the, again, like you were saying, the perceptions matter. Given the political climate back home, it's it's not going to look great if we if we go in and we do another you know Iraq quote unquote. It's yeah, just... and that's the thing is is that Iraq or we can never be open about what really was the motivation in Iraq. Uh, we're always there, like if the government, if you think about their position, like people who are outraged about who like say yeah, and you know you lied about chemical weapons, that narrative, right? They don't care it's over like and uh i i don't know who said it it was somebody who i ended up being like this dude doesn't know shit about iraq but he said america invaded iraq for reasons that don't make sense and i'm like yeah pretty much because like there's they're never going to be able to be open about like what was going on and like um i mean it was it was basically reactive it yeah, was, critical yeah. failures all around. Yeah. Like, yeah. and, and that's the just... thing is that's where Al Qaeda really won is that America yeah. was crippled with fear that they couldn't react right and they're fucking punching at ghosts. But also, like, um, there was an idea that Iran was going to be next. I mean, Bush, I that's the, the Bush identified them as the axis of evil, and that's why they're calling it the axis of resistance now. Like Bush said that axis of evil speech or something. Like he's like Iran and and North Korea, we're gonna get them all. Well, after Saddam, we're going to topple Iran next. Okay, buddy. I'm I mean, like, going to do it, Dad. Bush, Bush. I'm going Bush, to invade Iraq. Bush was like, oh, this was this is actually really hard. Daddy made it look easy. Uh, reaction from the, um, it, let me show you just over here, the reaction from the, uh, pe the, the Pentagon, right? This is John Kirby, so their spokesperson. I want to begin with um, the initial reaction here from the administration on China brokering uh, this deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Um, good news, concerning news, or both? Anything that can bring the tensions down in the region is welcome, Chuck. And if this can help us end that war in Yemen, if it can help the Saudi people feel uh, more Interesting comfortable, take. they're not going to be able said this, bro. This is why we're the CIA. No, I know, but it's like, very interesting. Come on attack from the houthi rebels that are supported state. by iran uh then then we welcome that uh we think maybe i'm just uh, so used to people having it's important for people to remember that one of the reasons that iran was willing to sit Believe down at the table not, was some in people fact, the are actually they were... rational and like well spoken they they just see a way they could spin it as good which i don't, I don't know man fucking I was I was I was yeah. hoping that it, he would twist it and I would be I would be able to rewind and be like, bro, it said it right there. Anything that brings the feeling down. internally the from their own take. people and mm -hmm. externally from the rest of the world, by the way, they're supporting Russia and Ukraine. I want to begin with. <laughs> OK, Kurt. OK, John. OK. You know, I, I I really I mean, put aside from what he's saying, I kind of like I like Kirby because his name is funny. He looks funny. He looks like someone who would be in the office you know in the u.s version he re he makes me laugh and you have to laugh with <laughs> otherwise these people are gonna make you cry man anyway um was he well i think that was one of those moments where he realized that they were agreeing with him uh-oh uh -oh. <laughs> he realized that they had good takes and he's like ha, ha, da, da. what is that what is that deflection my dude 
it's it, it's it's so funny like he's he's dying he's dying to just shit on iran and he's like he's biting his tongue so much he's like yeah well you know anything that has peace what is he talking about he literally said anything that will reduce tensions is good <laughs> oh man that's fucking funny that was really it's like when conservatives like think that they're triggering Iranian and then they start posting like the fucking triggered lady meme that they've been posting for like eight See, years. It's, it's hard. It's hard for him to imagine that like every person in Washington, like you know, that there's people in Washington who don't just want to bomb Iran to the ground. <laughs> like I, this guy is like, like, like not everyone in Washington is John Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> really funny. But look, listen. He one, he mentioned Yemen, so let's talk about Yemen. I I tweeted this originally um, uh, in my uh, so in, in my commentary on 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 the deal, and you know I mentioned Yemen specifically because the war in Yemen is something that uh, w was. Uh, Everyone who's talked about this has mentioned Yemen specifically because it's a central part to the deal. That's one of the main things people care about is like, oh, this will hopefully end the war in Yemen. Uh, done at, with the backing of the United States, right? So I'm, most of the people that are in Biden's administration now actually started the war in Yemen. And I find it so insulting and, and, and ballsy that he just sits there and, and, and is talking about like, yeah, well, you know, people don't like it. True. Having Houthi rebels attack them and so on, and hope hopefully this brings a war to the end in Yemen. Yeah, w which you started. Anyway, um, they helped start it. It's not directly. Yeah, to I mean, a, a, a Houthi here. missile attack once. Um, uh, I mean, come on, delayed like, one of my flights, so that was pretty inconvenient. Okay. Uh, that whole the whole notion that America started it, like, come on. No, that, like didn't. that that war is a fucking clusterfuck. That is a that is like. You know, it's you it's, know, it's facts. Aside. It's like when you fucking like look behind your TV and all the cables are tangled, and you're just like, "Fuck it, I'm not even gonna deal with this." <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's, it's a side point, right? Um, this this hopefully is good news for 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 Yemen because if the Saudis uh, listen to reason, and again, you know, I I I don't like. Um, it makes me it makes me sad. I, I'm I'm saying this uh um in, in parentheses, but it makes me sad that we, we have to take such a uh we have to speak with such heavy blows against Saudi Arabia because when it comes to Yemen, what happened there is it, shameful. It's very bad. And I'm not saying this because I like to to, uh, to say anything bad about Saudi Arabia. It's nothing to do with that. It's really nothing to do with that. I, I think most people there are are against what's happening, but I you know I'm hoping that the the Saudis are are listening to reason, and from what I'm seeing, they they are changing their course and their path, and that uh, the, everything in Yemen, the the sanctions stop. I covered the oil sanctions in detail, man. You have no clue. You guys have no clue what those sanctions are doing. Once again, it's like, um, the, it, it's almost as wor just as bad, if not worse, than the bombs themselves. Really, it's it's very easy to picture bombings, but uh, when you when you put oil sanctions on a country, you destroy them. Lebanon is the second area because Lebanon is um, – how can I explain this? You know, Lebanon is a country that is wild. <laughs> it's like – it's the wild west of the east, um, you know, and any second you could have, <laughs> you know, something uh, r ridiculous and crazy happening. And, and, I, and, I, and again, I say that with, with passion, with love uh, to Lebanon. Lebanon just says I, I I speak with um, about Saudi Arabia, but my point is that Lebanon is very diverse. You have uh, different factions, uh, you know, from Christian groups to to Shia groups to Sunni groups. It, it's very 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 diverse, and some some politicians inside of Lebanon, um, you know, are are connected to Saudi Arabia. Uh, basically, you know, they have good they enjoy good relations with each other more than others, right? So when you see something like this. Uh, you you also think that okay maybe this this will help um, both sides. So if we're talking about Hezbollah and and Iran and uh, people who are you know uh, close to Saudi Arabia like Hariri for example, that they can work together on solving the issue because you know the Lebanese pound has basically been in the gutter. I mean the other the other day last week I think it hit the lowest point, which for me I. I Okay, I was letting him. I was letting him cook here because I wanted to see like where the point was. So I think what he's saying is that 
Um, this oil deal will also potentially help Lebanon's economy. I was like trying to figure out like what does Lebanon really have to do with this, but I guess uh, like I guess you uh, could say that like it could help Lebanon's Saudi, economy. Saudi Saudi gives them like a lot of like aid and relief subsidies, but they've kind of cut them down in recent years because of Hezbollah influence in the government. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Just kind of speculating here, maybe because of renewed relations with Iran, like Iran can kind of reel in Hezbollah a little bit, and then Saudi would be more willing to give these aid and like subsidies back into Lebanon. Yeah, and remember but this: this was knows? shot before all this shit broke out in yeah. Israel. Israel, this is a month old, so yeah. And like, and like, but then again, you also got to remember, going back to the whole Iran reeling and Hezbollah thing. Hezbollah is very much its own. Hopefully. Yeah, with Syria, it's funny. I should I should mention Syria, but you know, pause like, it right now. I don't think um... he's he's missing one very big glaring question: is what does China get out of this, other than oil? What what's in it for China? Because China, just like every other oh, communist it's state, gonna, like like he was saying, there's the whole thing where like BRICS is on the table. Sure, but like every you know, communist state, relations there's an that. ulterior motive here. Yeah, there, it also upgrades China their wants. face as like a peacemaker. Mm -hmm. So that's but what he's missing here. China's China being able to get a good foothold in the Middle East, I would say, is very unlikely. Um, just because, uh, as much as people think that the Americans run the Middle East, they're extremely economically <laughs> independent there. And that's why I talk about how that's where you're probably going to see like something like the euro come out of like there's going to be like similar basically to a petrodollar like the way they think of it like like it's there's going to be a major like uh, oil backed like economy that could come out of there hopefully. You know, it's when it, when we talk about Syria, it's mostly the United States and Turkey. Uh, so basically, the C the Caesar Act sanctions from the U.S. and the Turkish-backed militias, um, who are you know s standing in the way of of uh, the war coming to an end. Saudi Arabia right now and and Qatar they're not such big players uh, like they used to be, um, but uh, you know it's it, I think there's a different dynamic there. Uh, but who knows? Um, uh, you might see also uh, Saudi Arabia. Having uh, um, better ties with Syria as a result, Mo most Arab states are, are are doing that already. I was just about to say they're already moving to recognize it, so that's already kind of happening. Qatar isn't going to though. Qatar fucking hates Syria already anyway, so this might be rightfully uh, so the, the push they need. But we'll see about that. You know, Syria is kind of a side point in this discussion. For for me, the biggest point here, like I said, is that uh, the the Chinese. This is so so um, uh, good for them. No one expected this. I, I don't know anyone who expected this or, or saw this coming because they've been having talks uh, together uh, in Baghdad, in Iraq, for a couple of years now, you know, about this. So it, it's, it wasn't clear that it's going to happen now immediately. There wasn't any, any sort of... Uh, um, a way to contradict yourself by saying, like, everyone knew it was coming in, but they just didn't know when. Any, uh, you know, uh, anything in particular that took place. But... Uh, it's uh, it's really good for the Chinese. They're 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 showing that there's an alternative model. There's a different way of doing things. There's a peaceful way of doing things, right? It's not we're gonna do the same thing with but with our guns and our tanks and our yeah, just wait, bro, nothing. just wait. The Chinese the Chinese tanks are fucking awesome. Um, I don't know why you would not be buying Chinese tanks if you can't get access to like American tanks. The Chinese tank is probably the best one on the market right now. The fucking Type 96 tank is fucking awesome. It's a good fucking tank. Uh, a lot, and, you know, Russia can't even prove that they have a modern tank right now. You know, like, are they like, there's no proof that the engine even fits in their tank or something. Yeah, there's one running model and it moves very slowly. Yeah, because they don't, they don't have an engine for it. So, like, China's tank is a good tank. There is no pressure or force or coercion involved in, in this deal in any way. In any way, there. This is not like. How do we know? You know, uh, uh, there. One of the. How do you make a deal without coercion? Mm. Good question. Them is a losing party. That's that's what's so um, distinctive and substantial about it. And the Chinese being the ones who brokered it, I I think for me is is uh, like I said, it's just as mag magnanimous as having the the 
um, the establishment of ties <laughs> itself. Just as important. And it's such a blow to the West. Oh my God, what a blow to Western diplomacy uh, and, and Western foreign policy. Oh my God. Peace in Yemen? What are we going to do? The Chinese have showed us up. They have showed us up. And they've been doing this for a while with the economic No, model, right? they did the so job thought, for okay, them. We can use the That's Chinese all. As a, as a workhouse, now America doesn't have you know, to worry. Where we, where we produce all our goods and then ship them off over here. And we can use their people for cheap labor. And then the Chinese are trying to show us up. And we're not trying. They're starting to, right? And, and China's b booming. They're lifting so many. Are they, though? I think the only person who probably has any concern about what how America feels is Saudi Arabia. And like I said before, it's about that economic independence. They kind of want to show America that they are like, because you had like, I mean, come on. It was only a few years ago where Trump had that big poster board and like puts it on MSB's lap and starts using him as an easel. And MSB was like, I wish I could just kill this motherfucker right now people out of poverty they're, they're uh, uh you know people's um, income is going up their their purchasing power is going up china is on track to become the the leading uh, economy number one economy in the world and now oh, we've been all saying sudden, this since 2007 that's exactly what i was about to say bro <laughs> yes <laughs> we've been up. saying this since the china's 90s. a threat and they're going around and they're doing the belt and road initiative and they're trying to better the world and uh, do it through economic partnership with no coercion, no, they're not. there's no coercion involved. And now the Chinese. Yes, there have done is. The same it's literal thing. debt trap diplomacy. Shut oh, the I fuck think up. The, I think the debt trap is a little bit overrated. I think certain people are going to get fucked, others are going to benefit. And it depends on how these states operate and like how they want to do it. If they allowed the corruption to come in, like uh, Ghana had a serious problem, like the because like uh, you, uh, Sudan, like the Chinese will only hire Chinese. You, Uganda, like Uganda had an issue. Has yeah. a bit of an well, issue. Well, that's that's what the Belt and Road Initiative is. Is that it doesn't actually employ anyone from that country. A part of the deal is that Chinese workers work on these projects. Let, let, me, so let me ask you something. They don't do you, actually do you, get do guys, any economic benefit from these deals. Do you guys think? That, I'm sorry. The. Uh, Again, I don't know the exact interest rates of these like infrastructure deals that uh, China is doing. I, I, they might be like around 10, 15 percent. But do you guys think that there's that there's like an aspect of the way the Chinese are doing the Belt and Road Initiative where they're like, OK, we just need a couple a couple of these countries to fall into a debt trap. Not all of them. Or not uh, even the majority. I of them, just, would, just I would say probably there might be that type of attitude, but I they're think like, we can like also kind of we can also on, take like the like tanky narrative and bring up how Ukraine is in a debt trap with America right now. Like America's I mean, purposely putting Ukraine in a debt trap. We can say we just do it, we're just doing it with weapons. Like they can't like yeah. Ukraine, he's against that. China's doing it with like money and no coercion. We do it with well, weapons, where obviously uh it's one of our major uh, exports is weapons. So there's there's uh there's aspects of debt traps in all of these deals because they're all coercive. Right. You, know, it, Jack, you just you want to add anything? You just got to be smarter. Yeah, I mean the the Belt and Road Initiative is its whole purpose is to um completely benefit China and completely yeah, to give them not money over time. Else. Yeah, it, it's completely and utterly for China's benefit. There's no other reason why they would be doing this. And now they're going to control global overland um trade and then they're going to have access to ports through pakistan they're going to have access to all these different things and we're going to see an expansion of china they could, worse I, than america you could ever think of i'd like to see what happens next um because like there's the whole thing where america talks about like there's the whole it was especially in the clinton era where they were talking about how NATO is going to patrol the seas and keep everything safe. And that's going to be like their expanded role is making sure all the trade and oil keeps flowing. I mean, if China uh, wants to be able to try and step up and do that, and they're not acting in a way where they're going to like blockade people and do like really dumb shit, you know, like if they want to, if they want to help fucking shoot Somali pirates, like they're more than welcome to. Yeah, but that's as, not because that's the Belgian Motor Initiative. As the hey, I know, but. You know, I'm gonna. I, you know, I'm not a bad faith kind of person when it comes to genocidal regimes. I guess no, but obviously that's what they're gonna do. Of course, I'm just saying. Like, 
there could like if from this type of person's perspective there could be a thing where it's the direct counter because obviously noam chomsky talks about this all the time and that's why they bring it up all the time is nato like patrolling the oceans even though it's like a multi all, all countries kind of obviously our navy is bigger but i mean you can look at the map of the where the chinese russian and american navies are you can see it pretty well what, what's going on already the new Silk Road, they've done the same thing now with mediation and foreign policy, and they have embarrassed the West, and they have showed us up. And you got Kirby sitting there and saying, you know, the Pentagon sitting there saying, oh, it's a good thing and everything, but let, let's see what they do, because I can guarantee you they are fuming. They got goddamn smoke coming out of their ears right now. <laughs> and I would be too if I were in their shoes. I would be too. Let me show you Biden. He didn't even answer the question about this. Th this is... Guarantee you because Biden could care less. <laughs> I, I don't even know if he did this on purpose, but this is so... Look at this. This is a YouTube short. Oh, God. Saudi Arabia and Iran reestablishing re diplomatic relations, sir? Better the relations between Israel and the, the Arab neighbors, the better thing. Will you sign the bill that House did you down? Okay, I, I, I don't even know what that was. What the... I'm going to play this again. It's so bizarre. Bro, come on. We don't need to see it again. What are your thoughts on Saudi Arabia and Iran reestablishing re diplomatic Holy relations? shit, guys. We get it. He's old. Better the relations between Israel and the, the Arab neighbors, the better thing. Will you sign the bill that what? Happened? Okay, look. Look, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he just he didn't hear the question. He's walking out of the room. There are people yelling. He's yeah, okay. Maybe he didn't hear the question, or maybe he misspoken. He meant Iran instead of Israel. I again, I don't know how you could confuse the two, but it's it, it's Biden and and you know he is well, he's an I old mean, man. I'm not trying to make fun of him or something like that. I'm just saying that that's again, I'm not one to defend Biden usually, but maybe that's what it was. So whatever, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And and I showed you what the Pentagon reaction was. Um, but we'll see what Biden says in the coming days, right? I, where's, where's, where's my favorite, uh, my favorite Ned Price from the State Department? Come on, where is he? He's got nothing to say about this. I can't, I need to, to see if they had anything in the last couple of hours. Ned Price. I can't believe nobody cares about this. <laughs> uh, where are you? Where oh are my you? God. The, like, There's the gotta be something, who, man. I think Saudi Arabia is gaining the most out of all of them. It's going to be seen as a peacemaker. It's going to look really good for MBS. Like, um, it's going to take a lot of uh, a lot of eyes off that journalist he massacred. Give me a second. I'm just going to help just a lot things with up. Yemen. Um, I was just telling you what I think, and and I'm actually shocked that there are people writing this in the Western press because that's what it is. That's what it is. That, you know. The, 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 I was about to say the French begin with the French and the British and all this trying to dominate the Middle East. Really, everybody is trying to do that, you know, you know since the Greeks and, and Romans. Uh, but my, my point is that among Western, um, you know, uh, uh, recent Western powers and colonial powers. Ottomans. All right. Well, I guess that's that. It broke. <laughs> your your computer's like, John, why do you keep using They have showed you up right now. And China is actually looking like the, the, the peacemaker. So... So they're quoting Aaron Miller, who served as a Middle East policy advisor at the State Department for 25 years. Ah, there you go. I was looking for a State Department uh, um, employee to say something. <laughs> um, he said it was... He's trying to do... He's literally doing the Tim Pool thing where he doesn't realize that everyone agrees with this take and everyone is, like, backing this. Like, really stunning. That's the best quote they got. And then and this is what he's going to give us is, like, haha, he doesn't... He can't... He's coping. Really stunning that the Saudis have cut a deal with the Chinese and the Iranians. He said, I think it demonstrates that the United States' influence and credibility in that region has diminished and that there is a new sort of international regional alignment taking place, which has empowered and given both Russia and China newfound influence and status. Yep. It's called BRICS, right? It's called the New Silk Road. It's called the multipolar world. My friends, I told you, I told you when, when the Ukraine war started and, and we started seeing these, these ripples in change, this, this, this is one of those waves. It's not a ripple. This is a wave of change that you're witnessing right now. Live with me, we are witnessing the world stage beginning to shift and take on a new form. The geopolitical world stage is beginning to shift right before your eyes. Pinch yourself because...
Yeah, it's going to, just like it changed when the, you know, invasion of Iraq happened. Obviously, the invasion of Iran Ukraine has changed everything. Yes, obviously. And obviously, people are going to look at NATO right now and be and start realizing, oh, NATO is actually, remember, we were about to say it's defunct. Remember, we were about to, like, throw it in the trash. And now everyone is going to be looking at NATO and say, oh, NATO is actually useful. We should consider doing a lot more of these alliances ourselves. Because, I mean, look how it's working out for them. Yes, you are witnessing an important moment in history. Yes. So here we have the usual smears, blah, 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 nuclear weapons, Ukraine. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, honestly, I, I, I'm kind of, like I said, I'm kind of shocked that they're, they're, they're writing, um, writing this in some Western press outlets, that this diminishes the United States. It does. And I, I suspect that, uh, you know, they, they, they'll come in with the China smears and so on in the next couple of days. But uh, there's no way around it, man. There's no way around it. This is, Why do you need to this smear is, China? Uh, a it's obvious. In time in history. This Fuck is the beginning China. of bricks and the new world, um, uh, the new Silk Road. Jesus, I was, I, I sounded He like, almost said new world, world order. Jewish, new world order. <laughs> God, those, those guys, man, they gave you goddamn, they send shivers down your spine. Um, this, no, no, like I said, guys, this is, this is a really a pivotal Ooh, moment. Yourself. And, and remember that, um, that it's, it's kind of like, I don't exaggerate now. I don't exaggerate, but do you guys remember, let me ask you a pop quiz question in, in the comments right now. Live chat. What is what is the the moment that the French and British uh, lost their status as powers on the world stage? What is the moment? Tell me right now in the chat. Let me see what you got. Let's go. Well, probably World War II. Um, there was uh, Ataturk probably did a lot for uh, diminishing their powers in the Middle East. I don't know. What about you? They, I was, I was going to just say probably around World War One, World War II. Uh, just kind of, so, there were several points in time between about 1914 and 1970-something 19, 19, 19, like where their, their powers just ultimately diminished. Yeah, and like uh, the whole like uh, Ataturk reforms and stuff that... Yeah. And the Arab nationalism that came out during that time were pretty huge. Yeah. But yeah. I would say that British it now is in the position where they really are just like worthless. But France still has like France still is a disgusting imperialist yeah, we, we, in yeah. West Africa. Yeah. Yeah. So. And we've we we've obviously got Vietnam. That's another point in time. And I'm talking about like the whole timeline of Vietnam, like between some of you are saying end of World War II. Yeah, yeah, because we had to go in there to clean up the French's mess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't have to. It was a bad decision and it shouldn't have happened. We should have just let Vietnam be free, but whatever. I'm not gonna pretend to that I could understand how scared they were of communists at the time. I can understand the whole like how they were scared of terrorists and why I can laugh at them for that, but I don't we wrap it up. Yep. (laughs) You guys think World War One? Algeria, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, uh, on, that's in why one regard, two times the go. speed. Suez Canal. Most of you guessed it right. It's the Suez Canal. So when Nasser, shame on him, he had the balls to nationalize his own canal in his own country. How dare he? Mm. Um, in, in case you didn't understand, I, that was sarcasm, right? Nasser is a boss. Nasser is a G. Nasser has a portrait right up there with the badasses of history. So when he he, he nationalized the Suez Canal, this was considered an affront and an attack in Paris and Whitehall. Okay, in, in, in L'Elysée and uh, number 10. So what happened is, you know, Israel, who was always in for bombing Arabs, uh, joined up with the UK and, uh, and the French, and they, they attacked Egypt all at once in 1956. And all of a sudden, the United States steps in and says, hold the fuck up. And the United States got Britain and France to disarm and walk home in shame like, uh, you know, like, like a pack of idiots, looking like a bunch of dumbasses. And that was so embarrassing. That, is, that was so embarrassing. You know, Uncle Sam put on the big boy pants at that moment. It was so embarrassing for the French and the British that that is when they lost their, their, their status as world powers. Yeah, like, you got to think about that. Even, even independence in India in 47 was not as bad as this, right, in, in terms of, of the world stage. So I don't exaggerate, and I don't want to say that this is the same for the United States. May, I mean, maybe, maybe in a few days we'll change our... Jesus Christ, it's bro. Definitely. Oh, my God. I don't, like, I don't want to exaggerate. That, oh, my. Even suggesting that is insane. I was like, I was waiting to see if you had a problem as, with as the someone, entire narrative. As someone, as someone who has relatives who died in the Suez crisis, that is insane to even suggest. I, I, I have relatives who died building it, and who died fucking in in the Suez crisis. That is nuts to to even suggest that. 
And, you know, and I even said it, it was like the rise of Arab nationalism was also probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the war turned... in Algeria, the, the, uh, the um, fucking the Suez Canal. It, yeah, it, 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 all, it all tracks. The Arab or revolt. The a few years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and it naturally should. I mean, it makes sense that all those things were happening at that time. Because right. and, um, if you look at 100 years before that, um, because that whole region is dominated by the Ottomans, right? But 100 years before that is when you have the French Revolution, all these revolutions and democracy things. Europe, all those things develop, all those democracies develop, especially post-World War II. It's only natural that um, it happens because obviously there was more independence from the Ottomans during like the slavery trade and all that shit. So those countries were able to develop all those things and those ties. So, of course, when the Ottomans leave in the Middle East and anyone who tries to come in there and hold power, like, of course, it's going to have the uprising. It's just a pattern that's going through history. They're just, you know, they just had a oppressor that was in charge of them slightly longer than other places did. So we'll look back at it differently. But it's starting to smell like it, right? It's starting to smell a little bit like a, a Suez moment, right? All, all of this, Ukraine war and, and, you know, dropping the dollar and uh, new, new Silk Road. It's starting to get, we're getting a little whiffed, right? <laughs> My brother, this is her. Creeping up on old Uncle Sam. Okay, so again, I'm not, I'm not going to call it. It's, it, it, I, I, uh, if I'm wrong, I'll hate myself, but we're getting a whiff of it. You feel me? Let's leave it, let's leave it there. And, and, and let me just say bravo, bravo to the Chinese for being the fucking adults in the room. And bravo to Iran and Saudi Arabia for being the adults in the room, people with brains who are mature and engaging in diplomacy instead of war. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is not just about always oh, the United States is humiliated. Screw that. This is about setting an example for the rest of the world. Thank you for being the adults in the room. Everybody, give them a round of applause. This is dope. This is dope. This is dope. Thank you guys very much. <laughs> really, you'll you love to see it. You'll love to see it. You'll love to see it. It's so good. It's so refreshing. You know, isn't it nice to, to, to wake up to some news and say, like, oh, look, these guys, they actually, they buried the hatchet instead of, oh, you know, they're bombing this. Or the, you know, it's, that's good. That's good. Really, it's good. Look at the chat. Look at the chat. <laughs> oh, man. I love that comment from Dan Emo 592 he, he says it's not Xi Jinping. It's Xi Jinping. <laughs> Dan Emo 592 oh, Very good, very good. He's That's so excited. Man. That's very good. Bricks power, baby. Champagne to the bricks. That's very good. I love all of your emotions. Champagne very good, very good. Jesus, man. Lewis says, help. Here's hoping to follow through on it. I think they will. Just to address your, your not concern, but your, your, your uh, um, uh, cautious, and shall we say, uh, um, uh, well-posed uh, comment. I think that if they don't follow through on this, whoever that may be, whether it's Saudi Arabia or, or Iran or China, it'll, this will be very, very, very damaging. They have every intent um, and, and, shall I say, every uh, motive uh, in the world to follow through on this. And let me let me argue why from every side. The Chinese, man, they, 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 they're they looking like, like as one of you said, Xi Jinping's right now, you know? <laughs> this is very, very uh. good for their reputation and, and persona and uh, on, on the world stage. Now, when it comes to uh, Iran, you know, Iran has had closer to, I mean, I don't, know, I don't know if you would say really that much closer ties because both of them sell oil to, to, to China, uh, which is another interesting aspect. But, you know, Iran is, is generally speaking, I would say closer to Russia and, and, uh, and China um, than Saudi Arabia. And I, I, say, I say this not just because of the, the, oh, they sell oil, but because, you know, Iran has had... If you look at the map, they're physically closer. To Dude, this, this has the and most Russia's basic back, sorry, around, uh, basically, I've um, ever heard. China and Russia have backed Iran during the nuclear That's talks. That's why I said he wants so bad to be like on that Aaron level the Aaron Mate level but like he only has like a, he's he's so down at the bottom that he's getting like the I mean he's bigger than us of course he's bigger than that uh Hezbollah channel that I found as well and he has lower production value than them but he's been online and like streaming for a long time like he has like put in the like hustle to like even though he does have a very small audience like he has like work to get it for sure but like um I don't know the, what the balance to nefarious to useful idiot is. Like, Aaron Mate is just mm. nefarious. Nefarious, yeah. You know? Like, I think a lot of, like, bricks! Oh, boy! Like, come on, bro. Yeah, that I, is so I, think he's, I think he's just um, useful idiot. Yeah. That's what it seems like. He doesn't seem to have malice in his speech, like most do. Oh, he's an Assadist. So, uh, every, you know, it, it's just that how do you fucking, like, um, Big like, cab, all Assadists are bastards. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I, like, it's like, of course, it's like, how do you, like, actually get, like, a bad take on this one? Yeah, it's kind of very milk toast.